if it seems strange to accept MS into your life, then remember it is a part of you no matter how small or big of role it plays in your life. And the fact is that when you can accept MS, you'll realize you have more control over your life versus less. I'm Jenda Tracy. I'm the founder of Women Thriving with MS, where we help guide women to move from surviving with MS to striving with MS to thriving with MS. Today, I want to talk about acceptance, the big scary elephant in the room. It's amazing how we often equate multiple sclerosis with fear, multiple sclerosis with worry, multiple sclerosis with discouragement, disappointment, grief, and, and all of those feelings are real. Now, when we look at a life with MS, the fact is that pushing MS away, the acceptance of it actually makes it a bigger problem in your life than a smaller problem. I know this from personal experience because I spent the first seven months of my life pushing MS away, buying myself, buying my way out of MS. And truthfully, that didn't go well for me. <laughs> Actually, it made me really miserable. And it made me feel that I had absolutely no control of my life. And it made me feel very angry. And there's nothing like walking around feeling angry all the time. It doesn't mean that those feelings aren't going to show up and be there for you, but they will dissipate any feeling that you have that comes into your mind, it starts with a physical sensation in the body first, and then it forms a word in the head, and then it becomes a, a reality of what you're thinking. So we want to be aware of that for sure. But the reality is that just because you accept MS into your life, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like MS. <laughs> it helps if you can befriend MS because it's with you and it will continue to be with you. And you can try and eradicate it from your life. That's possible. But from my own personal experience, that just doesn't work very well. So when acceptance is happening, when, when you're actually just acknowledging that MS is there, and that it's in your body, and that you're trying to navigate your life while living with MS, then that creates space. It creates space so that you can ask yourself the question, what do I have control of? How can I move my life forward while living with MS? For myself, I think the big turning point for me was when I started going to therapy. And that's when I realized that I was putting a brave face on in the world. And that brave face that I was putting on was actually to my personal detriment. And I was for sure, I was agitated that people could not see that I was struggling because of the invisibility that can come with living with multiple sclerosis for sure. It can be super frustrating, absolutely. Even to this day, people don't necessarily get it or understand unless I communicate it to them because I'm just doing my thing and they don't notice it. Now, obviously, if you have visible physical disabilities showing up, then people will notice that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they will equate it with MS unless they know that you live with multiple sclerosis. So what we want to look at here are three key ways, three key ways to focus on taking back control of your life. And the very first, the very first is acknowledging MS and allowing it to just be there like an unwanted guest in your home, <laughs> just letting it be there. That's so, so important because what you're saying to the brain, what you're saying 
up here in that penthouse suite is, hey, I know it's here, I know it's real, and I'm going to accept it because it's not going anywhere. It's not going to pack up and move out tomorrow, <laughs> which would be great. So I'm going to accept in my life. So that's number one is accepting. The second, the second is to ask yourself the question is how, how can I take control of my life? And in fact, if I were to reframe that question is in what way can I take control of my life and see what comes to you? For me, what I recognized was that I had control of certain aspects of my life. I had control over taking naps, even though I didn't want to, to manage my day more easily. I had control over my thinking, how I think about MS, how I perceive that other people think about MS, how I navigate my day. Think about that for yourself. What do you have control over? Let's say you were to come up with a list of 10 things that you have control over in your life and then pick one and put your attention towards that one thing. And then once you feel that you have, <laughs> have more control in that area because you're putting your attention towards it, then you can move on to the next thing on your list. For me, the first three years of my life were pretty messy living with MS. Even when I started to accept it, I was having huge, massive relapses around vertigo. It was so bad, I could barely leave my house. It, the, the lights were too bright. I was constantly laying on my floor or laying in my bed. I was crying. <laughs> it was a very difficult time. And I don't know what happened, I can't say for sure, but over time, as I changed my lifestyle in terms of what I could do and taking back control around what kind of exercise could I do now? So maybe I couldn't run anymore, which was really my joy spot for me, even though I wasn't a great runner. <laughs> I realized I could do other things. I could get out and I could walk. I could take a walk with friends so that I had some social connection. I could actually get on my bicycle and I could cycle. Now, I did have a lot of accidents in the beginning <laughs> over the first few years of getting back on my bike. Part of it was it was a lack of confidence that I was experiencing. Part of it was fear. And so I needed to build up my ability to be more confident about riding my bicycle again and to sort of bust through that fear by recognizing that fear was there. And over time, I've become a quite a competent cyclist. And actually, this has built up my confidence over time. I still have to be super, super careful. And I know some of you out there, you ride trikes, or you might be using the A-linker, or some other type of bicycle. It doesn't really matter. And maybe you can't cycle anymore. Maybe there's something else you can do. Maybe you can walk with a cane or an assisted walking device of some other sort. So think about what is it that you can do and maybe you can do it even a little better by really getting either support from a physiotherapist or just practicing and finding the best way to do that. Just like for me with the bicycle, it was something I was excited about the possibility of being able to use. I have many scratches and scrapes. Even five years ago, I really had a bad accident on my bicycle, but I was wearing my helmet and it was fixable over time, I have a scratch. But for the most part, the most part, I have been able to successfully ride my bicycle. And for me, that has been a very empowering experience. So I want you to think about what's that one thing on your list of 10 things that you have control of over that you can work at to get better at, or at least be in that place where you feel uh, confident and maybe you need to go out with somebody else 
and do that activity. Maybe it's not safe for you to do it alone in case you fall like myself. <laughs> I often did it by myself and then I had to deal with the messiness of the situation, but I kept going at it until I got to a place where I felt more confident and less fearful. And when I got to that place, I realized I could actually ride my bike and do a fairly good job of it. So figure out what that is for you. So we've talked about acceptance. We've talked about lit making a list of things that you have control over in your life and then picking one and really working on that one. If you look at the list of 10 and you see that there are maybe two that are going to be the easiest to take more control of in your life, <laughs> pick one of those two. Don't go to the hardest that you do have control over and then work on that first. That's not going to help you build your confidence and get you moving forward in that area of your life. The third is believe in yourself. You can look back to times in your life before MS where you struggled. And then you had a breakthrough where you solved a problem, where you were able to do something better than you could do before. Go back to that time and remember what it was because you have that ability, that intrinsic ability inside of you to replicate that resilience, that strategy. Maybe the situation is different and it, you're going to transpose that from that time in your life where you could take back control over something that you maybe can't do now, but how can you take that attitude, that courage, that persistence that you had before and apply it to this situation around one of those things that you have control? It always starts with the, the small steps moving forward the small movement that you take, the commitment over time. Now I've been riding my bike since the MS for, gosh, like 11 years now. Again, I still need to be very careful. I have my hands close to the brakes because I know there are times when things could get precarious for me. And at the same time, when I get on that bike, I have a level of confidence that I didn't have 11 years ago. And this is a reminder to me, and I'm hoping that you'll find for yourself that this is a reminder for you, that you can do it. So acceptance, number one. Allow that acceptance to be there because MS is going to be in your life. It's going to play a role in your life from here on in. So when you push it away, what you're saying is, I'm denying the fact that I live with MS and you don't want to do that. That's not a happy way forward. I know from personal experience. Number two, make that list of 10 things that you do have control over in your life. Focus on one of them. Don't pick the hardest <laughs> and start working away at that. This will bring you empowerment. It will bring you confidence. It will remind you that you do have control over your life and that your life is moving forward with hope, with possibility, with excitement, and so much more. I'm Ginger Tracy. I'm the founder of Women Thriving with MS. And thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that.